Welcome to the Trading Group 2 meeting. Today is the 1st of May, 2018. So in, in Europe, it's a holiday. Um, nobody's working here in Belgium except a few restaurants. Uh, normal, normal in the US. Um, I didn't know that it was a holiday in Europe on the 1st of May until I moved here. But um, welcome everyone. Nice to see you, Amy, Tim, Bruno, everyone else. So uh, what should we talk about today? Amy, how are your trades doing? Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, uh, good. Um, I uh, had about four trades on and uh, closed out a couple of them uh, last week. So, yeah, getting mixed up. I think it was maybe Thursday, Friday, something like that. I was able to close out a couple of them um, early because the profit was just there. As a matter of fact, that nest, the nested iron condors just do really well in this super choppy, higher volatility market that we've been having. So I was able to pull out, I don't know exactly, but more, if you get to, if you get to, it's a, I think I, I entered about 71 days to expiration. Usually it's entered somewhere between 70 and 80 days to expiration. And um, I was able to pull out a little bit more than 50% of the original credit within like 17, 18 days. So it's just no reason to keep the risk on. So that was nice. Oh, yeah. um, and then the weird or the, the monthly version did really well. I was able to close that out a little early, made a nice profit there uh, last week. And the only ones that are kind of a, a little bit of a pain, but still doing pretty good. And I can show those is um, the, uh, um, the shorter term one, the 14 day, you know, in this kind of really extreme choppiness where things are kind of going back and forth. Hold on one second. Um, it, uh, you know, they just they keep keep getting hit with adjustments, so it just kind of makes it a little tougher because they're such short term trades. But they're hanging in there pretty good. Um, I can share my screen real quick if you want me to. Yeah, sure. Okay, let's see here. How do I do here? Screen. Here. All right. I think you can see my screen. Yep, yeah. Yeah. So, can. so I've had to make a couple of adjustments. Some of my conditional orders were hit for some additional put debit spreads on both of the 14 days, which are um, expired. One of them's expiring the 18th of May and the other one's the 25th of May. So uh, like this one, 18th of May, uh, I think the market's kind of, yeah, it's gotten gotten down a little bit further. As a matter of fact, I think one of my conditional orders is going to be triggered here in a second, so I'm going to have to send out a message. Um, not for this trade, but for the other one. But anyway, so, you know, just as of a few minutes ago, it was actually up almost 200 bucks, um, but it's hanging in there. Um, I had to do another put debit spread today, but it just doesn't have a lot of time left in it. So, um, and there it goes. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so anyway, this one, you know, still, unless we continue to really drop off hard, um, this one should make some money in the next few days. And then uh, this, this one is the one that I just put on last week. So that one's the one that just got a triggered adjustment on to flatten out the deltas. So this will move up a bit. I just added a put debit spread. Um, but you know, it still has time to, to go to expiration. So there's still, you know, money to be made in this one as well. So all it needs is a little bit of volatility to come out, not even that much. And they're so short term, they usually, they can look negative one day and then super positive the next, just depending on what the market does. But, uh, um, yeah, so they're doing really well, but I'm going to send off a message. So I'm going to hand it off back to you <laughs> so I can oh, yeah. send off a message to the class. And, uh, so I'll, Amy, I'll just real just quick. Just real quick before yeah. you go, are you, are you net long puts? It looks net like long. That, from that wrist grab. Uh, yeah. Uh, this one you mean? Yeah, it looks like there's an extra long put somewhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there is. I always add one. I usually add like a, a far out of the money. In this case, it's on the same as the long of the put credit spread. But I always do at the very beginning of the trade, just kind of as an insurance um, to kind of flatten it out. And then if there's like a really big move down at the very beginning with a really big volatility pop, I don't get caught off guard. They right. don't really do much later on in the trade. I mean, they're, they're helpful, but during the early, early part of the trade, they really can be a savior just in case something crazy happens. Right. Uh, and uh, so that's, that's why I put them on there. Uh, one other thing that was, that's a good, you know, I'll, I'll hop back on in a second. And I'll, uh, I wanted to talk if you want, if you know, after everybody's done or whatever, I can sure. talk a little bit about some other little extra thing you can do with the puts 
um, that is kind of similar along those lines. But I'm going to just send a message. I'll just I'll be here, but I'll just mute myself and send a message. I'll come back in a little bit. All right. Sounds good. Thanks, Amy. Uh-huh. All right. So Amy will go send out her trade alert message. I see uh, we also have uh, Bruno here. Hi, Bruno. How are things in Portugal today? If you're here. Can you hear me? Now I can, yes. Ah, okay, okay. I don't know whether I have to unmute myself or whether you do it from your side. <clears throat> yeah, pretty good in Portugal. Yeah, life is still present, pleasant here. Spring has been coming a bit late, but I can't complain. Yeah, it's a little cool here, but at least we have some uh, some blue in the in the clouds. Or you know, <laughs> it wasn't all. It was really uh, rainy last night, but uh, now it's nice, but cold. Well, you've chosen to go back to the North Pole. I mean, uh, we did. Uh, overall, <laughs> it's been a good move. We do miss the weather from time to time, yeah, though. Yeah. Yeah, the trades are doing okay. Um, maybe I can show you. Yeah, sure. Um, I forgot. What must I do? Uh, there's a share screen at the bottom. Oh, the, yes, that's right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so you can see my screen now? I can. Yep. Okay. Uh, so last week, um, well, last week I closed the May trade. Um, I think um, most of my subscribers will agree that I kind of chickened out a bit. Um, uh, where is it? Um, so I, I left a demo trade on for those who don't want to listen to me, and I respect that. Um, so this is the, the trade, how it should look if I didn't close. I closed for about uh, 2100, uh, which is good enough for me. I just yeah, didn't want nice to profit. think. Yeah, that's a nice profit. I didn't want to think too much about it. But um, this is the, the trade I should look today. Uh, it's pretty safe, flat delta. I mean, I think I mentioned that a couple of weeks ago when I was here on trading group two, that um, with this uh, weird volatility environment, um, I try and stick to a flat delta, large range, just not to be caught off guard with vol spikes. Um, so <clears throat> uh, yeah, be, be, leaving a flat delta also, I mean, you are more sensitive to uh, Vega and and but um, in this last uh, recent fall uh, we've had uh, in the last couple of days uh, volatility volatility has not really picked up so it could be low trading volumes or uh, just waiting for a frame C and Apple earnings tonight I don't know so this trade if, for those who kept it on uh, is doing pretty well I would still suggest uh, and recommend to close it soon. I mean, it could be could be nice to maybe try and go for close to three three thousand dollars, but what the heck, really? I mean, uh, I closed it, so that's okay. Um, I have another variant on with a put can on the hedge, which is also doing okay. Actually, doing better in the in this uh, higher volatility. Um, so this one is also doing well. Um, or, or to to my subscribers, I said last week, uh, Friday, that the market is going to probably turn around. So it's time to think about a Vega hedge. Um, I suppose uh, some have done that. But it's not really really necessary on my June trade. My June trade is, um, where is it? My June trade is doing okay. Oh, well, it's losing a little bit now with the vol coming back. But... Um, you see, it's still pretty safe, you know, a large range, uh, flat delta. Um, I'm not using that much capital, so I suggested that maybe it will be still time to, although I, I usually try and get to full size by 56 DTE, so it's a bit late, but uh, it's okay. I could maybe, maybe add another broccoli butterfly to, to the structure. Um, maybe um, something like this, just a, a kind of a slightly bearish, compared to a normal entry, something like this. Um, just waiting for option view to update. Um, it shouldn't be, yeah, yeah. 
Uh, it's still not updating. Um, maybe something wrong with my, oh, it should be okay. Sometimes this, this happens, uh, especially when the market moves a bit hard. So th this is something I, I, I'm considering just to, to add a little bit. I mean, it wouldn't add much, maybe up to $15,000. So as of, I mean, okay, we were about $600 in profit. Um, all I want is to be sure that we cover, I think the next support will be the recent close around uh, 2615, 2590. So this, this, this trade should be okay. Um, so, of course, if it uh, takes a bit more time to, to go test the Feb lows again, um, we'll have a bit more negative delta and uh, the downside cover would be uh, higher. Um, also, last week, um, I started um, uh, the rest, uh, another trade on the Russell. A bit of a late entry. It was a spur of the moment decision to get back into the Russell. I haven't really traded on the Russell for a while. So I wanted to get a feel for it again. And it, it happens to be doing pretty well, although Delta is positive, but it's, it's, it's okay. Um, generally, I don't like keeping uh, uh, position. I mean, even if the Delta, well, the Delta is not that bad. I don't know. Maybe, let, let me put it in the IO. Yeah, Delta is, is probably flat, yeah. So <clears throat> regardless of Delta, uh, I don't really like uh, uh, having the market pass the, my shorts. So, and I haven't, a, it's, it's actually a smaller position. I haven't scaled into full size. So here as well, I could probably add a bunch of uh, broken butterflies on the, the downside to give it a bit more negative Delta and protect the downside a bit better. But um, for, for a, an attempt to come back to, to the Russell, it's not doing too badly in just a week. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm also uh, monitoring trades. I mean, some of, uh, I mean, one, of, one guy in my group uh, has entered late and with the market moving so much, I mean, if, if you miss an entry and then, uh, of course, they come back to me and what should I do now? And so it shows that uh, depending on the timing of the entry, you sometimes you can have a, it's still a rhino, but it's, it's, it could be a different trade. And this one is doing pretty well for someone who um, actually decide to enter late. Um, so this is, this is another June trade, which I've recommend, I mean, uh, uh, it's kind of a private, uh, private alert service, but this one is doing very well. Um, and it could, could actually reach a profit target by, by the, I mean, usually by 35 DTE, the profit target is 2,500. And this one is actually doing better than the official class position. Um, and I've got another trade I, I am um, monitoring for a friend, a French friend. And this one is, um, I mean, I don't really agree with his market view, but he is quite bullish. He says the market will jump back. Um, I don't agree with him, but I mean, that's his, his, his call, not mine. Uh, where is that? Um, June, 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 June. Where is June? Uh, June, Syria. Yeah. That's... So this trade, I mean, okay, is way too bullish for my liking, but uh, it's doing better than the class position as well. Uh, 850. So overall, May has been good and June is turning out to be okay. Um, I just would like to make sure, I mean, this, with, again, with that volatility, not only we're not being paid for the risk we're taking, I mean, IV should be historically, consistently above SV. So it's, although the, the trades are doing nicely, I'm not that un, uh, comfortable or I would say 100% relaxed because there the can be sharp moves either way, anytime. Um, so... Um, that's why. That's why I would rather stay um, um, pretty conservative. So I've actually sent him a, a private message to to be careful because I, uh, at, at the moment I have lowered my delta that's to about fifteen, not twenty five. So this this trade, I mean, this trade was actually doing a lot better yesterday. Or I mean, I think on Friday I actually advised him to close it with position because he was a about 1,200 in profits. Um, he didn't do that. Um, so, but that's, again, that's his goal, not mine.
but it shows that you can actually ad adapt the trade to a particular market view. Uh, I can't really uh, show a uh, risk graph because uh, I have Maybe trouble. Maybe if you uh, just suspend your quotes and then um, just use the control T to get theoretical prices, that missing one. Oh, well, does that work? Oh, generally I close and restart and it comes back. I don't know why it's, oh, there it is. There it is. So, okay, so it's not doing too badly. The delta is way too high for my liking, but uh, Cyril is a guy who just uh, looks at his uh, screen every couple of days. He's too busy, he got a day job. I, I respect that. But um, it's, a bit, it's a bit more, a bit of a, I mean, he, as, you, as you can see, he's a bit more bullish. Um, at the same time, if, if 2615 holds or 2590 holds, okay, these, his profit could evaporate. So he's prepared to absorb and digest uh, a higher volatility in his uh, T plus zero line. But um, so this trade should still do okay, providing it doesn't go back to fair blows. But um, that's, that's his trade at the moment. Uh, maybe I should go back to that one. I'm also monitoring. See, this one is doing pretty well. Still has some negative delta, good theta. Um, we, we, it's, Vega's a bit strong, but um, now that we are back to normal volatility levels, I would say that uh, the vol shocks are not as bad as they were a couple of months ago. So. And this one is, is pretty much covered all the way down to fair blows. So providing we have um, support levels being defended, uh, 2615, 2590, this, this rate should be doing quite well. And now let me go back to my official trade. Um, well, this is the Russell. Well, Delta is flat. I probably don't have to do anything yet. Yeah. Refresh is a bit slow. Oh, there it is. Yeah. So it's not too bad for a return to the Russell. Um, so I will probably trade it more regularly as of now. Um, part of the same alert service. I mean, uh, I want to keep things simple and simple. I'm not, I'm not going to split and, um, and um, so my June position now that I've got data, where is it? So I would say it's, in terms of stress level, trade is pretty, pretty easy going at the moment. I don't have too much to worry. So the official trade is not producing as much, but it's still pretty cool. I, I think I, I was a bit uh, silly to add an upside hedge when it, uh, um, was close to breaking out on the upside. I, I still think that 2680 was at the time I saw a turnaround on my uh, market analysis, my, my charts, and uh, 2720. So we, in case the market goes back to those levels, I mean, the stretch will still do well. And we just need time to build a bit of it of negative delta to be more covered to the downside. But I would say it's a Nothing is stress-free, but it's a low stress kind of trade at the moment. Yeah. In terms of the next entry, generally in low IV, I tend to enter early. So I start looking at a new trade around 77 DT. So probably end of the week or early next week. It's not that needed at the moment because we have, um, not only we, we use a lot less capital and, um, but uh, at the same time, it's also, so you, I mean, in low IV 2016, 2017, I used to, to enter early to get a better price. Um, now I might do the same, but for a very different reason, just because uh, uh, historical volatility is high. I'd rather have a short entry on the vault pop, taking uh, any opportunity as they arise uh, as of 770T and then extend the range. That's what, that's what I did for June. I mean, when the market uh, dropped, I entered the, the, the low ones for very, very cheap. I think I paid about uh, three, three point something dollars a piece. So it was very cheap to enter that and they, they now serve as a hedge uh, 
in terms of market drops. And when the market uh, went back up, uh, um, so I use more scaling. Um, it's no longer, I mean, I, I can understand people have little time available that they want a, a simpler trade where you enter, uh, you know, three broken butterflies and upon some condition go to full size. I, I, I respect that, but uh, I'd rather follow the market at least once a day. And, um, and if I've got an opportunity to enter a cheap um, broken butterfly, uh, I think timing entries is, is, is not crucial, but it's important in this market. So, um, but that, the good thing is that we use very little, very little capital. So we, are, we have a lot more flexibility to, to manage the trade. Um, I don't have any trouble. I mean, uh, at the moment on my PM account, my capital usage is so low, very, very low. I'm, I must be at 30%, 35%. It's much lower than it used to be. So no, not much trouble. At this time, when the trade uh, reaches a uh, cruising altitude, um, I, as, again, I can still use an extra broken butterfly to adjust delta, add a bit more set into the trade. I mean, why not using capital if you have it? Um, I think this one is wrong. One, two, two, three, four. Yeah, that's, that's more like it. Yeah. Um, so this, if I add an extra one, that's what it would look like. Just add a bit more negative delta, more carbon and downside, add a bit of theta. So I have to be, um, this a little bit more tuning and tweaking than, than um, on the simpler trade management, you know, the one by the, the guidelines, but um, it's not necessary. That's the way I want to trade it. Because again, I, I don't feel I'm 100% comfortable with this volatility environment. So usually at uh, cruising altitude, you know, you, you just uh, let uh, set a peak pick up and, uh, and just uh, wait for descent and, uh, and approach after 20 ADT. Um, I mean, for the June trade, we, I, we, it was pretty simple because we reached a profit target, so we just closed it. But um, this one, I don't think we'll reach a profit target or maybe a later one around 21 ADT. Generally, we, have a, we can actually sense wh whether the market will be a good one, an average one, or a difficult one. So, and I think this may, I could feel that it would, would, would be good. Um, of course, we can't control where the market is going. And, and um, it, it, it was very close to reach, reaching, reaching uh, uh, an earlier profit target around 2300. Um, um, but anyway, I close it for about 2000, so it's not so bad. This one, I think it's, it's more geared to reach uh, 1500, which is not so bad. Um, it's about 6% on the $25,000 plant capital per cycle. So not too bad. So, and I'm starting to look into July again, maybe a small entry. Are there any questions maybe? Well, I know you, you mentioned uh, market timing. What do you use for uh, your market timing calls? Um, I use my, my own spreadsheet, uh, my own chart, you know, on, um, I have my own trading view chart, which I make available to my subscribers. And, uh, so this one had a, a, a sell signal. So that's why, uh, and I, I use Fibonacci mainly, but so I, I don't display everything here, but, uh, and I also use a one hour version for actual timing, but let's say when, when, the trade is broadly uh, bullish and here going you no know, more bearish. Um, it helps me with my adjustments, you know. Um, so I kind of monitor when I need to add some negative delta to my trade. So, I mean, it's, it's just normal support resistance levels and Fibonacci and my own proprietary, uh, proprietary uh, indicator, you know. Nothing too fancy. It's... Um, well, it, the mathematics are fancy. It's it's based on entropy. So, but I mean, it doesn't matter how, how it is calculated. It could be a, just a straightforward oscillator. So, as long as you have an opinion. Yeah, basically yes. I mean, I, I used to be a directional trader. Now, I use that background and knowledge to bias my trade. 
like I said, when the market bumped here, I said to the guys on, in the group, uh, it's maybe a good time to start looking at a Vega hedge for those who are inclined. And it was actually a pretty good call because anyone who maybe bought uh, cheap teenies or uh, a Vega hedge in, uh, in, a, in a form of a deep, uh, sorry, far out of the money um, uh, butterfly or broccoling butterfly, that would have been a good timing to buy a hedge at that point. I still think the market will go and test these lows. I don't think it will go down to Feb lows, but who knows? Um, I, I, I make sure that my tent is, uh, um, covers that area. So it's very difficult for me to actually uh, uh, model volatility as such. I'm better at uh, figuring out where the underlying is going, but volatility is just a bit too crazy for me. I mean, I should work on it, but uh, um, I've never really done any uh, analysis of uh, VIX and uh, volatility. So it's a bit of a weakness on, on my part. Yeah. So that's a nice chart from trading view. Yeah. And it's free. So it's, uh, it's um, for those who enjoy coding, the, the, the pine um, coding language is pretty simple, uh, but it's, it's more for programmers because uh, there are a few limitations that, that uh, some people are not happy with, like you can't have uh, loops. So you have to do very um, uh, precise coding and, and, and avoid using loops because you don't have access to that. Yeah, that can be a little challenging. Oh, it's funny. Yeah, I like that. I heard from Daniel, by the way, a mutual friend of Bruno's and mine. Um, he's supposedly sending me some of his exes uh, in a couple of days. So uh -huh. we'll see if that pans out. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, I've been uh, hesitating about going back into coding because uh, I'm usually pretty much of a caveman. But when I get into coding moods, you just don't see me for weeks. And uh, um, that's, that's, that's not the life I'm <laughs> looking forward to. I mean, I used to be like that, but so for me, it's part of the past. Um, I'd rather let um, youngsters do the coding these days. Yeah. And Daniel said uh, he's got a little bit of code burnout. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. I see chat. Um, I don't see any messages in the chat or no questions. Okay, cool. So, so I, yeah. So, just a quick question: When do you think you'll be putting your uh, July trades on? Um, as I said, um, there's no rush in terms of uh, capital usage to scale out of a trade and scale in and to. So, and this, I would maybe. Technically, in this kind of market, you can enter later than we used to. So I will start looking as of 77 days, DTE, I mean, uh, so as of Friday, just to maybe to get a little bit of skin in the game. So just a, a smaller one, um, if, preferably if the market drops um, so that I can, again, try and cover the downside in the 2,500. And if the market shoots back up, I mean, those, if you buy early on a gold vault, vault pop, it's going to be the same as in June where I bought those lower broken butterflies for very, very cheap. So if I can get a, 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 it's basically kind of a building the hedge and then I will add the, the more no, normal, so to say, entry later on. Are you looking uh, for any market conditions when you enter? Um, no, based on like your, uh, your market opinion? It's mostly my market opinion. Um, Again, it's, 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 I, I see this market as being unusual. I mean, I, I don't like that. Uh, it, like yesterday, I, 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 I saw that market turning around from the 2650, sorry, sorry, 2680, And I thought the market would uh, settle around 2660. Um, I think the, the, all moves are being exacerbated. They're a little bit too crazy. So that's why if I have a chance to, cover the downside it's it's like building in a hedge into my kind of atm trade at the moment yeah 
So that's why if, if as of next week, if the market drops and I can get a very, very cheap low down broken butterfly, it's going to be part of the, a, the, the rhino as such, but it's more like building a hedge and then I can build later. Um, I, I, it's up to 56 DTE. Um, I, I, I enter as, it, as, I, I mean, as the market goes along. Um, I don't think the market will drop below 20, uh, the, the fair blows, but so yeah, on, on 26.15 and 25.90, if the market, if, if the vault pops uh, nicely, I will probably enter um, um, as of, I mean, I could actually look at entering as of today. As I said, I use so little capital, um, but uh, no rush, no rush, there's no rush. My, the, the target is to have about five broken butterflies. So the, the, the guidelines say three plus two, and for those who have little time available, I, I understand it. You should go for a simpler, you know, you just sim sim a simpler management. But um, in the last month, the last few months, um, um, I just try and pick opportunities as they come up. Yeah. Looks like we had a couple of questions. Uh, Norman asked, uh, when are you planning on adding the proposed trade to the 15 June position? Oh, this one. Um, it's not really necessary right now. Uh, if I feel that um, um, a little bit more negative delta would be nice, uh, I will uh, send an alert, but uh, it's not. Okay, I could, uh, again, we could use more capital more efficiently. I could add, add a bit more set into the trade. The vague exposure would be similar. So, But it, it's more of a, extra i mean um, the market the, the the trade as it is now is all already at full size so um it's not really necessary so if the market again if i feel a bit too uncomfortable with uh, the size of the moves and the market um, drops too hard i mean it's not a matter of testing the 2630 which i, I said it would today or or it could but if it falls really hard on 26.15 and uh, the Vega um, turns my Delta too quickly positive because of course Delta is very much affected by, by uh, volatility, um, especially in the, in the variable mode. Um, so if I see that the Delta is turning too quickly positive, I will buy some negative Delta. So it's not really necessary right now. The Delta is flat. The market is behaving. The support level on 2630 is holding. So it's, it's a matter, it's, it's really how support levels are being broken. If I can see that there's a lot of volume and it's really, really falling hard, I'd rather keep my munitions uh, available. It's not, at this point, Delta is flat. I don't have to do much. Um, and of course, as time goes by, Delta will turn naturally negative. So not, it's, it's, it, it depends, you know, if, if a, a shock to the system, so to say, happens later, I will, there's a lesser chance that uh, I would do anything to the trade. If it happens now when a flat Delta is, offers a bit of a, the, the, the flank to um, a, a strong, abrupt vol spike, then then if the delta turns too quickly positive because of a, a vol shock, I will add it to the trade. I hope I'm making myself clear, but that's basically the way I, I think about it. And then Dirk had a question. I don't know if he, can you see the chat? Um, I don't know. A little bit longer, maybe easier oh, to there, read it. Okay, chat. You mentioned your oh, about um, the margin to equity, right? Um, yeah, it's very low. Generally, uh, I'd, I'd like to use my capital more efficiently around 60 percent, 70 percent, sometimes even up to 80 percent. But uh, I'd, <clears throat> really, at, the, at, the, at this time, after the, the, the vol shock we had early in the year, and the fact that the market has not fully returned to quote unquote normality. My 30% is too low, but I probably wouldn't go back to 70, 80%. I think uh, using 50 to 60% would be the maximum. 
Thirty percent is your max. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Uh, I'll try and use my capital a bit more. Yeah, sixty percent is fine. Yeah. But you, with PM, you never know. I mean, sometimes a SIBO or change the rules or IB change the rules, and um, every month the the environment is different. I, I did not actually anticipate that my my margin would be so low. Um, uh, I actually expected with the volatility we have, may, maybe the, the rules are a bit too lax at the moment. Uh, yeah. So I'd rather be safe. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, Bruno. I think, uh, okay. uh, let's see, is your margin 60% of PM or reg T? Oh, uh, PM, yeah, PM, yeah. PM. Uh, I use the, the Reg T. I mean, the planned capital in the alert service is always based on Reg T. Uh, and even for those who follow the extended trade, which is a slightly more aggressive, and then, okay, I kind of chickened up <laughs> last week and closed my extended trade a bit early. But um, um, generally, when I, even if I keep my extended trade longer, sometimes up to expiration week, I always check what would be the reg equivalent. Uh, I never exceed in PM what would be uh, the reg equivalent. Uh, I'm saying that for those who trade um, STTs and the like, and we, where they actually do more PM optimization, um, that I personally I don't agree with. Um, nothing wrong. I mean, it's a personal choice. I mean, some people like that. But uh, just trading purely in PM, ignoring what is, would be the Reg T equivalent, to, I mean, making a small profit, but because you managed to optimize your, your PM margin, um, that's, I mean, uh, uh, there's room for everyone. I mean, uh, that's fine, but it's not my, my trading style. So even for those who trade the extended trade on a PM account, because the the extended trade is a little bit more aggressive and it's more suitable for PM uh, accounts. Um, I still stick to 37, let's say 42 to run it up, $40,000 per, per tranche. So let's say you have um, um, 200K, I would say, well, don't trade more than five tranches. Even if you're in PM, you're using 30, 40, 50%. That's my, that's my rule. I mean, you can be a little bit more uh, aggressive and trade one more, but uh, again, I don't want to fall into PM optimization and having uh, those far OTM hedges. And that's fine. I mean, it can be done. I mean, you can use a, a far rockwing butterfly, a, a Dan type of uh, Vega hedge to also optimize your, your, your account. But to me, it's, on, it's another game. It's not a, it's another way to approach the market. I still trade the Rhino. It's an ATM trade. And um, I still use my Reg T as a benchmark, not only for me, for my sanity, but also it makes my, my trades be comparable to other ATM trades, also based on the Reg T performance benchmark. You know, if you, if you start mixing up everything, I mean, you can maybe, of course, blur the picture and, and say, well, my trade is not comparable, like uh, some do, but um, um, it's, it's a highly competitive game, and, uh, and I play by the rules that um, my trades must be comparable on the same basis. I hope I'm making myself clear, but uh, that's the way I think about it. Yeah, you are. Um, I had a question. Uh, you talk about the extended trade. What, what is that? The extended trade, um, well, the regular trade, it's um, based on capital usage of 25K per cycle and uh, 37 and a half. So basically one trade and a half, no matter how many overlaps and new cycles you've, you've got going. Um, and um, especially last year when the capital was getting tight, it, at least in, <clears throat> on a recti basis, the, the PM, uh, PM capital usage was still all right. So... Um, the, the extended trade uses 25k per cycle, no matter the, the, the overlaps you have. So, but I still use the maximum 
reg T equivalent, so as, as, that's what I was saying earlier, you still use a maximum of uh, 37 and a half for all trades open. Um, but um, last year when I had to start scaling out a trade to, to because you know when the, in, the, in the low volatile environment, you, the theta comes later, the profits come later. And so you have to start entering the next cycle and, and you struggle to make a bet on the, the one going at, at the time. Um, at least when you use the extended trade, you assume 25K per trade, no, no matter what. So you can actually use capital more efficiently and, and longer into the trade. And so, do you, uh, do you provide those, the, the normal and the extended to the subscribers? How does that work? Um, on, on the alert service, uh, the official alerts and trade, trade record is, on, is based on, on the regular. Uh, but everyone in the group is invited to switch to Slack. And on Slack, I give uh, regular and extended. Uh, so extended generally returns a bit more, but um, it's not showing on, on, the, on the track record. Okay, that makes sense. I don't want to confuse and have uh, you know, alert service A, alert service B, alert service uh, A and B for the wrestle and the same for SPX. No, keep things simple. So there's a lot more information on Slack, but um, um, on the capital discussion, soon Aramir uh, websites, um, it's basically a, a regular trade for everyone. Um, and even, even uh, as I said, I'm, I'm not, I, I do not intend uh, starting a, a wrestle alert service. Uh, I can't actually split the planned capital across two in the lines. So I suppose it would be simpler to have two. But uh, again, I keep things simple. So wrestle extended, wrestle regular, SPX extended, SPX regular, everything is available on Slack, but on the uh, alert service as such, it's, it's, it's only SPX regular. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Well, thanks for the extended uh, review, Bruno. That's great. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing. Yep. And I'll let you know if uh, Daniel ever sends me anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think he's been, he's been promising that for what, uh, eight, 10 years? <laughs> well, yeah, probably more. Um, yeah. But I think I have the right carrot this time. I'm going to trade Stephanie's account. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, you and I are very patient, but... Uh, he no pushes even often. the most patient people, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, but keep me, keep me posted. Uh, I'd like to see whether it turns out to be a reality. Yeah, yeah well, my guess is it will be, but um, we'll see. I will definitely keep you updated. Yeah, yeah. In French, we say, qui vivra verra, you know. If you live long enough, you will see the light. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks again, Bruno. And thanks, I just wonder, Amy, are you back now? I yeah, know. I'm here. Oh, there you are. Yeah. Did you want to, uh, you said you were um, wanted to talk about uh, some teenies or a hedging or something? Oh, yeah, you, you asked me about the put, so I, I was going to say something, and then I had to go. Uh, <clears throat> um, send off some messages. So um, yeah, just to finish, finish the answer to what you were asking me, I can just uh, share my screen here real quick. Yeah, it's probably easier. Yeah. Um, so that was after the adjustment there. Oh, that doesn't really matter. Um, so what I was talking about, I guess it doesn't really matter if I have a trade up or not. What I was talking about is sometimes um, putting on a, um, you know, I was saying that I'd, I'd like to put on an additional out of the money put, and sometimes it's much further out of the money than, you know, the uh, uh, near the, uh, sometimes it's really close to the put credit spread that I put on, and sometimes it's really far out of the money, it just depends on what's, what the prices are and the deltas. But um, another thing that I find can be useful, especially if, you know, you really think a crash is imminent or you never know when one's going to happen really. So anyway, you know, one of those, anything that's a really big move, like a crash type event is usually a little bit of a shock. Um, is what I found is 
sometimes just purchasing an out of the money put with like, so let's say I'm in the, <clears throat> let's just say new trade. Let's say I'm in the, um, uh, you know, monthly trade here, monthly cycle. Here we go. Let's say I was in the 15th of June. Let's say I had a trade on in the 15th of June. Um, I would pick something, you know, somewhere around 30 days further than that, something like that, you know, somewhere between 20 and 30 days at least out of the money and just pick something really, really way out of the money. You know, it doesn't seem like it's really going to do anything, but surprisingly they do. And it's just because, you know, so if I pick something down here, like, you know, 1060 or uh, something like that, <clears throat> it doesn't look like it's going to do much, but if there was a crash event, and it happened, you know, fairly soon, like within the first two weeks of the trade, something like that, or even the th three weeks. And that's because this is further out of the money. Exponentially, this far, far, far out of the money put exponentially is going to get a lot more expensive, but it's only going to happen for a really short time. And what ends up happening is, you know, something that maybe, maybe costs 50 cents or 60 cents or something like that, maybe even further out of the money. Um, it, and it doesn't work all the time, but it's so cheap, it's why not put it on? It's just one of those things where most of the time the money's going to get thrown away. But if something like that did happen, uh, then what happens, you know, even after a, a short amount of time, if there's a huge uh, vol, to, you know, vol pop with all the other hedges that are on, it exponentially will, will make more money um, than some of the closer to the money, uh, you know, um, uh, shorts will lose and it and essentially what can happen is it can push the trade so let's just go back to oh, why is this thing in the way let me move this down I can't even see my screen here no, I guess oh it's already live okay I thought that was in there so essentially what could happen is um, <clears throat> uh, this might be too far out. And this is, this is, yeah, this is, this trade's almost done anyway. But essentially what can happen is that this can end up boosting the trade so that the T plus zero line kind of comes, if you can see my screen here, would end yep. up coming up in this area. So if it blasted through, you'd end up with a profit, even if it wasn't very big. Sometimes it could be big. It just depends on how much of a move and how much the volatility goes up. And remember, there's also put, I have a bunch of put debit spreads on, so it works really well with this type of trade. Um, the trick is with those types of really far out of the money and then out of time puts is to just, you know, think of them as insurance. They're probably going to be worthless. You're never going to use them or whatever. But if it does work, the trick is to just take them off as soon as that type of a move happens because they're going to lose their value really quick too. So sometimes what will happen is all of a sudden they'll just make this huge pop um, they'll go from 60 cents to maybe like $8 or something, you know, or, you know, might not be that big of a move, but it could be. So it could, could get very expensive. It can go, you know, be $13, you know, from 60 cents. So exponentially it goes up so much that you can actually make money on it and it boosts the T plus zero line up above the zero, close out that far out of the money put and then start unwinding your trade. So that way it's like, okay, this trade, um, should have never have made money, but because I had it on and it just happened to hit at that right time, it can save you. It's kind of like for uh, like catastrophic insurance, I guess is a good term for it. Um, and it really, you know, the timing has to be right and the vol pop has to be right. But if, if there's something catastrophic that happens, those things uh, will help, but it's a very short term help. So it needs to be taken advantage of uh, quickly. Um, so that's what I wanted to, to mention that that is something that can be added to most of these types of flat T plus zero line, flat Delta trades, you know, whether it's a butterfly or a, um, or a, uh, a weird or style trade doesn't help as much with uh, condor trades just because of the, the nature, you know, of those trades is just um, it'll help, but it's not going to certainly not going to help um, put anything, you know, above the zero line just because of the, the, the graph, the T plus zero line is too slanted at that point. So, um, but they usually, you know, the way I do them, they usually have a lot more room to the downside as well. But 
but for the more flatter delta T plus zero lines, the more flat T plus zero line type trades like the butterflies and the weird or uh, these types of things can help. Um, but they, you know, they usually only help in a very short term and a very extreme environment. So that's all. That was, that was what I wanted to, to mention. Okay. And then uh, um, since you got your screen up, uh, yeah. did you want to show us that nested condor that you just took off? I guess it was a pretty quick profit. Well, yeah, that one was really nice. I mean, you know, in this type of environment where you got all this extreme choppiness, intraday choppiness, and the volatility kind of is higher, so you can really get out of, out in the wings. Um, sometimes, most of the time, those trades take a little time to make some profit, but every once in a while, you'll get some that are um, uh, that uh, come into play really, really quick. So let's go. And this one was really quick. It's nice. I think I have this set to end of day. Let me change it to adjustment. <clears throat> Let's see here. Oops. Oh, I'll just look at probably easier to just go in here and see exactly what date it was in time. Uh, But there we go. Oops, I want to take that uh, volatility back down to zero there. Um, <clears throat> so this one was taken in, I believe, to the 23rd. No, I thought it was last week, actually. It was later on in the day. Um, It was like towards the early part of the day. But anyway, so as you can see here, the um, I think the original uh, credit that I brought in was a little over $2,000, just uh, three contracts for each spread. So a really small trade. And I had it on for 18 days. So I started this, you know, with 71 days, 72 days to expiration. So, you know, a lot of time left in the trade. Um, you know, still, it was just the... June cycle, so you know, 53 days left to date, left in the trade, and it was already up over 50% of uh, the you know the uh, original credit. So usually, what I like to do with these is I'll play each credit spread individual, and you know, just look at it as you know, try to get as much profit, squeeze as much profit out of each credit spread individually, since it's a high, it's more of a probabilities type trade as a as opposed to a delta neutral trade. I don't really play it that way. Um, so I just play it on probabilities. Try to keep everything way out in the wings. Um, and so my target is usually somewhere between 50 and 70 to 50 and 75% of the original credit. But if I can squeeze out more than 50% in 18 days, that's, you know, I'm going to take advantage of it, just take the risk off. Because you never know when, you know, what if the market starts going in one direction or another and you don't want to blow that quick of a profit um, when the money could be used somewhere else. So that's kind of my thinking on that. So it, it reached that point so quickly. Usually these trades are on for anywhere from 30 to 45 days, but they average around 30 days, 30, 32 days. Um, so I don't really overlap them very much because most of the profit ends up coming in pretty quickly. Um, but, uh, but this was extremely quick. So that was nice. And then um, <clears throat> the, uh, the weird or, the monthly weird ore that also uh, had a quick profit, pretty you know, a nice profit pretty quickly. Um, I think. Uh, let's see what date I closed that one at. I was able to get out of that one early as well. So that was the May weird ore, and I was able to get out of that. <clears throat> Last week, I think it was on the 26th. So let's see if I go here and I turn the ignore on. So, you know, somewhere around there it was up, maybe it was up a little bit earlier. It was earlier in the day, I think. Let's see when it was. Yeah. So I was able to close this out for a pretty nice profit as well, pretty quick. There's there still some more money to be made in the trade, but the target exit date was only a week away. And so instead of, you know, what if the market continued to go up, then I might have to make an adjustment or something. So I just, in those cases, I just look at the risk reward and um, 
and always decide if there's enough, is there enough risk to stay in for, for long, for longer, depending on what the reward is. And in this case, there just wasn't enough reward to stay in longer. So I went ahead and removed that one early too. So, and in this market, <clears throat> the market seems to be able to, you know, <laughs> seems to want to do whatever it could be, you know, up strong. And then all of a sudden an hour later down pretty strong. So uh, I'm not taking anything for granted in this market, just, uh, uh, appreciative that the volatilities are higher so I can bring in more premium, which is helpful. Um, but uh, don't want to take any risk further than it needs to go with the market being so choppy. I, I did that a couple times and it didn't really, it just made things more difficult. So I'm not going to uh, stay in if, uh, if I'm not going to make that much more out of it. So those were those two trades, but uh, is there anything else you wanted to well, I'll just had a question. You, you take a trade off that fast. Uh, do you immediately look to put the next one on, or do you wait? Uh, what's your how do you approach that? Um, well, usually, I mean, with the with the monthly ones, I like to do them in the monthly cycles um, for the weird or, and um, I'll usually wait for the appropriate time to put one on. Um, but if I do see a good opportunity, I'll put one something on right away. Uh, but sometimes I'll just wait for the right opportunity to arise again. So, but for the monthly weird or, you know, there's going to be one on every month. Um, for the nested iron condors, there's going to be one on in every single monthly cycle. Um, and then for the weekly, that 14 day one, I can put one on every week um, and just kind of overlap a couple of them. So um, there's not a lot of waiting. Sometimes I might, you know, if I get out early, like for that nested iron condor, um, you know, I, I might have to wait a couple weeks before getting into the next one, but there's no reason to get in early um, on those. Unless you want to do a weekly cycle, uh, then that's, you know, something you can do as well. Or or if I had enough capital to spread it out and to do, you know, overlapping trades, then I would. But I think you mentioned that, the, the vacation. that the, yeah, that's not a bad idea, too. Uh, but, you, know, you, you had mentioned something about the 14 days have been challenging. How, how have you been keeping up at the last few? Yeah, those have been a little challenging, you know, to be honest in this extreme, you know, extreme choppy markets are not, it's not the best um, time to put on those. They, they, you know, they seem to be pretty resilient, but because they're so short term, uh, the less, why is this? I've got to move that down. There we go. Because they're so short term, um, you know, obviously the more adjustments that are made, they call every adjustment costs money. So with a monthly weird or if I make an adjustment, I have time to make up that cost. And sometimes they even make money, but most of the time the adjustments are just there to, you know, flatten things out, keep everything managed properly so that I'm not going to get into trouble on either side. Um, with the 14 day, because I'm just expecting that money to come in really quick um, any adjustment, any cost of an adjustment has to be made up and it has to be made up over time. Well, there's not a lot of time to make up that cost. So the more choppiness that's going on that's extreme, the more likely I'm going to have a, an adjustment being hit. And then, okay, now I got to wait for that um, cost to be made up. Um, so it should, that, that's why it's challenging because, um, you know, the adjustments are needed to keep the trade out of trouble, but um, there's not a lot of time to make up for the cost of an adjustment. So that's kind of what I meant by that. But there's still, you know, like this, uh, it looks like we're heading back up again. Um, and, you know, during the day, and, and you guys know this with the, a lot of these trades, this T plus zero line kind of just kind of bounces up and down a little bit, depending on what's going on. But um, so, yeah, this, this one right here is still has, a week and a half to go. Um, and there's still plenty of money to be made in it, but I just had to do a couple of adjust or it, see how many adjustments. I think I made two adjustments on this already. So those adjustments cost money and without the, that cost, um, this probably would already be, you know, profitable. So, um, so it's just a challenge to wait that, but you know, for instance, this trade right here only has the rest of the week to go. Um, and it's been bouncing up and down um, between, you know, um, a small profit and a larger profit. And then, of course, that had an adjustment as well yesterday, or actually this morning. Um, so it's surprising how fast, because it's so close to expiration, that once it, you know, gets closer, 
and even by Friday, um, it's not going to take much for that to bounce up quite a bit. So, um, and that's kind of what I'm waiting for, but they're just a little more, they're just more touchy because they're so close to expiration. Um, you know, the gamma gets a little higher and so forth. So, um, that's kind of that's kind of the thing with these. They're, it, this is definitely a more tricky market for this type of trade. That it'll do better if we don't have the extreme. You know, it's not that a, the high volatility um, is bad because you can bring in more premium. It's the the choppiness, the extreme choppiness, has been really kind of challenging right. uh, for these. So, yeah. I think for any shorter that, term trade, that's true. Yeah, yeah, and that's that's the only thing. So, but I'm persevering with them, and um, you know, we'll see how how these next two turn out. I think this is these are the uh, done four so far for the class. This is the the first two already closed, and then these are the second two. So it's just been a little bit more challenging uh, because of that. So we'll we'll see. Hopefully, that you know, eventually the market will pick pick something to do. But I have a feeling it's going to be kind of high higher volatility and and choppiness for a while. Um, but uh, hopefully, hopefully the intraday choppiness will will abate a little bit. Yep. All right. Well, thanks, yeah. Amy, for the update. Really appreciate it. No, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it looks like uh, we're at an hour, so this is probably a good place to stop. So uh, let's wrap it up for today, and then um, we'll be here next week, same time, same place. So uh, thanks again, uh, Amy, Bruno, everybody who participated, and we will see you all next week.